Good evening, or good morning, Prince George Wenya. Welcome to Sunday Worship, our second week of being quarantined. I pray that uh, you've been able to stay connected to us through the multiple media outlets that we provided. This week, I hope you had a chance to see our Wednesday teaching with music and our Thursday healing service with the healing liturgy, uh, teaching on prayer, and more music and prayer from other members of our church. This morning, uh, we have two new liturgical actors for our 9 a.m. service. Uh, they are typically 8 a.m.ers, and so uh, we're looking forward to doing the service together, some of us for the first time in a while. You'll notice again some changes tonight. We're not doing things exactly like we do them on Sunday mornings. We will, however, return to the old format as soon as we all get back in this building. And one last word uh, from our Bishop Mark Lawrence. He had a Zoom meeting with all the deaneries today and went over uh, his new uh, directive for communion. He only wants the priests to stand in for the entire congregation. So this week you won't see our lay people receiving communion. Bishop Mark told a touching story about uh, what he and Allison were about to do last Sunday, uh, which was he was gonna bless communion and they were gonna take it in their living room when he realized uh, that was the priest's job on behalf of the parish. And he's a bishop, he's no longer He's always a priest, but now he's a bishop and doesn't actually have a parish. And so he decided to fast. And so the prayer that we're going to use like we did last week after I take communion will be that prayer that unites us all uh, in the sacrament, whether we're taking it or not. And I'll be standing in for the church. I look forward to seeing all of you back here soon. We're praying for all the folks who are affected by this around the world. So join us, relax uh, in your living rooms or wherever you're watching this. And to God be the glory.
Please stand and turn with me to page 123 in your Book of Common Prayer. We open with the Lenten acclamation. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy endures forever. Kneeling, turn with me to page 100 for the Decalogue. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not cut. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts. We beseech you. Turn to page 124. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affection of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. Okay. Our first reading this, this morning is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had become upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. 
and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our Psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the deep have I called unto you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O oh, Lord, who could abide it? For there is mercy with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my trust. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning is from Romans chapter 6, beginning with the 15th verse. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves of impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please stand for our holy gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and to Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come also with her weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Pray with me, please. Come, Holy Spirit, come, please. And fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us, wherever we are, the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, Lord, in a mighty way to vanquish this virus, to restore people to health, and to bring us back together again. Use these words that you've given me, Lord, to speak to your people, for we long to hear your voice. Amen. Well, good morning, 9 a.m., Prince George Winyong. The uh, readings today intrigued me in several directions, but the thing that captivated me the most was this idea about the way Martha and Mary speak to Jesus. The way they virtually say the same thing when they meet him, and the way their hearts are changed as Jesus moves through the story. What, what captivated me in the story about those two was that they do, I think, what most of us do, especially in a time like this, especially in a time of suffering, especially in a time where our country, not just our country, the whole world, is gripped in fear and nervousness. They resort, like we do at times, to past tense living. They resort to past tense living. And when they speak to Jesus, the way they speak to him is essentially in the past tense. Most of us do that in our lives, and we do it for a number of reasons. We do it sometimes because we're afraid. And so we think, well, if I could just go back to the way things were, I've gotten myself into a bad situation, or I've gotten myself in a bad spot, and if I could just go back to the way things were, or doubt. We make a decision, and it doesn't pan out like we thought it would, and so we begin to doubt, and we, we imagine what it would have been like if we never had gotten ourselves there, or maybe, like I talk about sin at times, maybe it's just the devil getting into our lives and causing us to think in past tense terms. But whatever the reason, we slip in to past tense terms, the worst thing we can do with God, or the worst thing we can do to Jesus, is turn him into a genie. Essentially, um, when I was in sales, one of the 
funny things that we used to talk about was you're, as only, you're only as good as your last month's sales. Meaning, what have you done for me lately? We're all familiar with that kind of expression. And so what happens in our spiritual lives when we do this past tense living is we turn Jesus into a God who's only as good as the last thing he's done for us. But worse than that, when we worry about, and you fill in the blank, when we worry about cancer or divorce or coronavirus or even death, um, when these worrisome things begin to not only just occupy our mind temporarily, but begin to become the sole focus of our day, then they keep us from believing in God. They actually serve to help us doubt God. And here's what I found to be the most embarrassing truth about this past tense life, especially for us in this culture, because it's true for me and I imagine it's true for some of you. Even when times are good, even when times are good, I find myself thinking, well, this may not last. You know, we're experiencing plenty. The, the stock market, if you're a financial person, might be really roaring. And all you can do every time you see the stock market is think, well, any day now it's going to go down. Or your children. Your children are all in orbit. That's what I call it. You know, they're all circling. Nobody's crashing. And you think, well, any minute now I'm going to get a phone call and I'm going to need to give $300 more. But whatever it is, we don't fully believe in the good times. We, we tend to have this uh, place in our mind or place in our heart that just won't let, let us fully believe that the good that we're feeling right now is really going to last. It's really going to last. I, I wonder if many of you have felt that way at times, especially probably uh, right before the coronavirus, when lots of us were thinking, wow, this is a great time to be alive. Well, that's all tied to what I love to talk about, the difference between reaping and sowing and karma. Um, we believe in biblical principles as followers of Jesus. We believe that what God provides us that we reap uh, comes from what God has done and what God has sown. We don't believe that the good things we do come back to us uh, and the bad things we do come back to us. Uh, we don't walk around as Christians, or we shouldn't walk around as Christians, waiting for the other shoe to drop, which is kind of the point I was trying to make. Because waiting for the other shoe to drop takes away the other shoe that actually dropped 2,000 years ago. The other shoe that for Christians should matter the most that dropped was that Jesus Christ was crucified. The, the God of the universe, the one who had created through his breath, if you heard Walter reading from Ezekiel, the, the breath, the Son of Man, breathed. The, the one who was perfect, the one who was sinless, he was hoisted upon a cross and killed for our sins. That's the shoe that's dropped. That's the thing that I keep coming back to in these first few weeks with you, talking about, yes, it would be terrible if we died of coronavirus. Yes, it would be terrible if we lost someone in an automobile accident. Yes, it would be terrible if we found out we had cancer today. But more terrible than that would be to die without knowing the saving grace of Jesus Christ. An innocent man died for us, but that wasn't the end of the story. That's the direction we're moving as we get toward Holy Week. This innocent man who died for us, he rises from the dead. A dead man was brought back to life. Think about that. Think about that. He was dead three days. Now think about our story tonight. He was dead four days. He was dead four days. So the point, the trajectory I'm heading this morning is that I, I, I want God to help us. I want God to reach down as we get ready to go into Holy Week and help us with our past tense thinking. Help us with our, what have you done for me lately, thinking. And I believe these readings today come at us at the end of Lent for a purpose. Because as we prepare to look over the cliff of death, that's what Holy Week's going to do. It's going to move us all the way, if we'll allow it, whether we're gathered here or whether you're listening and following along at home. Each step of that week is going to take us to a cliff. Think Thelma and Louise, if you're a movie person, where they drive in that 50-something Thunderbird right off a cliff. This, that's what Holy Week's designed to do. It's designed to get us right to the edge and look over the cliff and imagine that we're going to die. That we're going to die. And Jesus breaks in during Holy Week and says, no, 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 no. The death that you're most worried about, I'm going to die for you. And he's going to die for us to break us out of our past tense lives. Because who God is, I believe, is remind, we're reminded of that in today's readings. God is the God of the past. 
We're told time and time again in Scripture to remember the Hebrew word zakar, remember. What we do during communion is called anamnesis in the Greek. We re-remember every week the, the Passover supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. So remembering is a big deal, but God doesn't want to leave us stuck in remembering. He wants us to remember for a purpose. He wants us to remember the past for the present, and he wants us to live in the present for the future. And that's exactly the posture that Jesus takes as he delayed three days to go see a friend of his. Uh, it was read beautifully tonight, or this morning, by Ryan. It was read beautifully. He delayed three days. And he says in there, like he said last week in our reading, why was that man born blind? Who sinned? And Jesus said, it has nothing to do with sin. It has everything to do with the Father being glorified. And we almost heard those same words this morning in the reading that Ryan read. Lazarus has been in that tomb so that he could glorify God. Jesus knows what's coming. When Martha and Mary both plead to him, imagine, Lord. I mean, they love him. They know him intimately. He sat in their house. He's had meals with them. He, he's part of their family. Lord, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Past tense. If you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. If only, if, past tense. And then later in the reading we hear, look how he loved him, past tense, as Jesus weeps, the shortest verse in the Bible. It's one of those great trivia questions. What's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. See how he loved him. He loved him, past tense, past tense. And I understand at that moment, putting things in context, because that's what we always should do as good biblical scholars, is we should look at the moment in context. Lazarus, at that moment, is not just dead, folks. In the Hebrew culture, once you were dead beyond three days, you were dead, stinking dead. They were at a moment of greatest, there was no hope. There was no hope for those folks who knew that Lazarus had been lying in there four days. It wasn't just the smell. It was the idea that Lazarus was never going to be back among the living. He was four days dead. So what the scripture wants us to hear tonight, I think more loudly than resurrection. I, I believe at the week before we get to Palm Sunday, I believe what the scripture wants us to hear tonight in this is belief and forgiveness. That's the message I think these things, these readings have come to us with. We say it every week in the comfortable words, 1 Timothy 1.15. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is a trustworthy saying, to be believed by all men. To be believed. To believe. And that's what Jesus, as he looks into the, into the tearful eyes of his friends, is trying to get them to understand. Once again, one of the sisters declares, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. But, but Jesus wants, wants them to say, okay, now what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with this fact that you've confessed this in repentance? Because it's great that our salvation exists for today, but it's also even greater news at times that our salvation exists all the way into the future. And what Jesus wants those two women and everybody who's there watching and listening to understand is that he is Lord of life now and Lord of life later. There's three great pieces of good news in this story as it relates to present and future tense living. And the first is Jesus comes to us. Jesus went to Bethany. Jesus went to solve the problem of natural death. And he's going to solve the bigger problem of death in just a few more chapters. Jesus is going to solve the problem of mortality bigger and better in perfect way in just a few more chapters. But remember this idea that Jesus comes to us. Remember how God comes to the garden. Or how Moses went to the people in Egypt. Or how uh, David cried out in the Psalms today about the Lord coming to him. Uh, or about the dead in Ezekiel that we heard Walter read this morning. How God breathes through the Son of Man this breath, this Ruach. If you're at home, I love to get people to do that. Say it with me. Say Ruach. That's the Hebrew word for breath. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. And then to Lazarus, and best of all, to each of us that open the door of our hearts to Jesus. 
he comes to us. Secondly, when he comes, he arrives and he stays. This church is testimony to that. 300 years, Prince George Mignon. The, the, the Spirit of God has dwelt in this place. I drove past the original uh, place that uh, the church was founded. I went down that road off of 701 um, near a little town, something fairy. Anyway, I was out there and I got to see the sign and I know where it is. I could drive back there today. But for 300 years, the Spirit of God, and probably longer than that, has been here dwelling in this place. God comes and he arrives and he stays, just like Jesus is doing in this story. And just like Paul says in Romans today, that any of us who have died with Christ and been resurrected have that same Spirit of God living in us. He stays in us. And thirdly, he raises us to new life. He raises us to new life. For those that believe, for those that repent and believe, he raises us to new life. So let me give you an image that I want to close with. And I want to get into the story just a second to do that, or into the gospel just for a second to do that. It's, it's the image of the stone. It's the, toward the end of the gospel when um, Jesus, after catching his breath, and I imagine Jesus is weeping. He's fully man. I don't imagine it's actually there in Scripture. He's fully man, and he's standing there deeply moved, Scripture says, as he comes to the tomb. Now imagine what's going through his mind. He's fully man and fully God. He knows everything. He knows, I imagine, that someday there's going to be a tomb waiting for him. And there's going to be a stone rolled in front of that same tomb. And the disciples that get to watch this event on the morning of his resurrection, on the thing that we're going to celebrate at Easter, are going to have that memory in their mind of, oh, remember the time that Lazarus. So hold all of that in tension as Jesus shouts those words to the tomb, I imagine. Take away the stone. Kind of like that show on television where they move that bus. You know, they've fixed up somebody's house, they've taken an old wreck, and they've converted it into something beautiful, and they just give it to the family. Imagine that. If, if Jesus, take away that stone, like move that bus, it would have a bigger, a bigger sense to it. But, but put that image in your head. Because I think that's a great image for any of us who've already died to sin in our lives. Any of us who've asked Jesus to save us. We can imagine the stone that was there, the thing, the sinful nature that we were clinging to, that, that Jesus rolls out of our lives, that he pries from our hands, he pries from the sin grip that we all carry. And it would be the worst thing in the world uh, if, if he hadn't have done that. But he does, he comes, he arrives and he raises so as we walk through this time of viral scare, as we walk through this time of uncertainty and hope, as we walk through this time of quarantine, and as we walk toward the holiest of weeks, let's all, let's all pray as we close that the Lord would show us his power and his life for us now. For us now. Let's ask him together to make us present tense people. People who believe that he is now and forever. That he is a present tense and future tense God. And you know what? The funniest way to do that is, is to remember. The funniest way to believe that he's present tense and future tense God is for all of us to remember what he has done for us. 300 years is a long time, brothers and sisters. If we could get everybody back in this church who had been in this town for 300 years and had them tell the stories of floods, of building collapses, of armies that invaded, of disease, of all the things that happened, we'd be standing here at the end of everybody's testimony going, our God can do anything based on what we had heard people tell us about what he had done. So never forget the deliverance that he has procured. Remember finally the stone that he rolls away for Lazarus as we get closer to Easter. Remember the stone on Easter morning that he rolls away by the power of his resurrection. But never forget the stone of sin in all of our lives that he's rolled away for good. Amen. Turn to page 126 in your prayer book and join me in saying the words of the Nicene Creed. Standing. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son and Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and hung on child. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is worshiped and Lord of our life, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world will come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. For Foley Beach Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America, Bishop Mark Lawrence, Fitz Allison Bishop in residence, Gary, our rector, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president, and Henry, our governor, and our local officials, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for our parish prayer list, Olga Abbott, Joyce Bourne, Susan Boyette, Michael Donnelly, Gary Duff, Faith Dyer, Ed Grant, Tiffany Harris, Dale Hicks, Liza Jagger, Mrs. Lee Jones, Doug Miller, Sharon Miller, Robert Mallard, Harold Ness, Pat Nall, Joanne Sasser, Marilyn Sinclair, Pat Stalby, Joe and Sally Steen, Emily West, Janet Williams, and Zella Wilk. And also for the family and friends of Prince George Church, for Alan, Bill, Billy, Cheryl, Chip, Christine, Cookie, Dale, Dean, Debbie, Eleanor, Jerry, Jeffrey, Jonathan, Larry, Lynn, Lily, Mike, Nick, Robert, Susan, Tim, Tootie, Virginia, and Walter, and for all others whom we now name before God. Julie Coons. And those whom we have forgotten, would you, O Lord, remember? Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayers. prayers for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet one another with a holy way.
Our service continues on page 132. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them out to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that in fervent prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may remain standing or be seated. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord and Savior Jesus face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, is sacrificed for us on the cross once and for all. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Join me in saying the prayer of humble access. We do not we presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may never more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's give to me. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Before we end our service and our post-communion prayer, I'd like for you now to turn to page 677 in your prayer book as we did last week. And join me in saying the prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Join me now in saying the post-communion prayer on page 137. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and especially of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us all and with us all this day and forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.